Section 10.5 is all about buying houses with a mortgage. We're going to talk specifically about two different types of mortgages, although there is much more than these two. Um, a homeowner's mortgage is just a long-term loan in which the property is pledged to security for payment of the difference between the down payment and the sales price of the house. So for example, if you buy a home and you it's a $300,000 home and you put $20,000 down and you default on the loan, which means you don't make your payments, the bank will become the owner of the home and you will lose the property. The two types of loans that we're going to talk about today are the conventional loan and the adjustable rate loan or the variable rate loan. The major difference between the two is that the interest rate for a conventional loan is fixed for the duration of the loan, so that means it will not change. The interest rate for a variable loan can change every period as specified in the loan. Lending institutions may require the buyer to pay one or more points for a loan at the time of the closing cost or of the closing. The closing is the final process in the sales steps. Um, according to the IRS, points are interest that is prepaid by the buyer and may be used to reduce the stated interest rate of the lender charges. So one point is equal to one percent of the loan amount. Let's look at an example. The Martins wish to purchase a house selling for $249,000. They plan to obtain a loan from their bank. The bank requires a 15% down payment payable to the seller and a payment of two points payable to the bank at the time of closing. Determine the Martins down payment. Okay, so um, remember their purchase price of their home was $249,000 and the bank requires a 15% down payment. So 15% as a decimal is 0.15, and all you need to do is multiply, and you'll have the amount of their down payment, which is $37,350. Determine the amount of the Martin's mortgage. Well, the purchase price of the home was 249,000. The amount of their down payment is $37,350. So if you subtract this, this will be how much um, they are borrowing from the bank. They need to borrow $211,650. So this will be the amount of their mortgage. Determine the cost of two points paid by the Martins. Um, so remember, two, uh, one point is 1%, so two points would be 2%. So we need to find 2% of their mortgage which is $211,650. And if we multiply that out, they will have to pay the bank $4,233 up front in order to secure this loan. Qualifying for a mortgage. Banks use a formula to determine the maximum monthly payment that they believe is within your ability to pay. So they calculate the adjusted monthly income. This is how much total money you bring in minus any fixed monthly payments you have, such as student loans or car payments or anything like that. They take that adjusted amount and they multiply it by 28%. This is what they feel is the maximum monthly payment you will be able to afford. Now this payment needs to include the principal of the mortgage, the interest that they're going to charge you, the taxes that you will owe the government, and the insurance that you are required to have on your home. There is a formula to calculate the principal and interest payment. Um, the principal and interest payment we're going to call M. In order to calculate this, you have to take the amount of the mortgage multiplied by the interest rate as a decimal divided by the number of payments you're going to make per year. This will be the numerator. And in, in the denominator, you do 1 minus 1 plus your interest rate as a decimal divided by the number of payments per year raised by the negative interest rate as a decimal, or sorry, the number of compoundings per year times the number of years you plan to have the loan. Um, it's very tedious to do by hand, so you have to really make sure that you enter it in your calculator appropriately. I try to get my numerator first, my denominator second, and then I do the division. 
So let's um, look at an example of how we can do this. So use the principal and interest payment formula calcula um, to calculate the Martin's monthly principal and interest payment. Recall that the Mar Martin's are seeking a 30-year loan. Their mortgage is $211,650, or $211,650, and their interest rate is going to be 7%. So what will their monthly payment be? So I'm going to scoot this up so that we have some room to write. So I always like to write the formula down first. So the monthly payment is equal to P times R over N in the numerator divided by 1 minus 1 plus R over N raised to the negative NT. Okay, so in this problem, our principal is $211,650. Our interest rate is 7%, and we are paying monthly, typically, for a house. And we are planning on having this house, uh, this payment method, for 30 years. Sorry, I forgot to make that 12 negative. Okay, so when I go to do this in my calculator, I like to um, simplify in the parentheses first. So I'm going to take my 0 0.07 and divide it by 12, which is going to get me 0 .05, 0 0.00583 repeating. Okay, um, so in my numerator, 0 0.00583 repeating. Then in my denominator, I'm going to have 1 plus 0 0.0058. And then I'm going to do 12 times 30, which 12 times 30 is 360. So I'm making 360 payments. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply my numerator out. When I multiply my numerator, I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 0.624993. I'm going to go ahead and take my denominator. I'm going to raise it to the negative 360th power. And then I'm going to do 1 minus that number, which is going to give me 0 0.876794131317. And then last, I'll do my division. Now remember, we are talking about money here, so I'm going to have to make monthly payments of $1,408.11 in order to afford this house. Now, an amortization schedule. Um, if you repeatedly use a simple interest formula month to month on the unpaid balance, you can calculate the principal, the interest for all the payments, but it, it can be very, very tedious. So... A list containing the payment number, payment on the interest, payment on the principal, and balance of the loan can be prepared on a computer, and this is called your amortization schedule. Now, when you guys go to look at your project, um, your project asks you to calculate a few different amortization schedules, and I should walk you through how to do this using Microsoft Excel. This is an example of an amortization schedule. Um, notice they talk about the interest rate, what the loan is, how many payments you're going to make, what your monthly payment is, and then they walk you through each um, month. So your first month um, of your $1,400 payment, only $173 is going to the principal, $1,200 is going to interest, and so when you deduct that, your balance will only go down a little bit from where it originally started. And then you'll do this month after month after month until you get down to the final 360th month, um, how much is going to the principal, how much is going to interest, and notice the balance of your loan should be zero. Um, now, when you go to do our project, our balance won't quite get to zero. We'll be at like 63 cents, but that's okay. Uh, another type of loan that you can deal with is called an adjustable rate mortgage. We also call those ARMS. Generally, an ARM rate is fixed for an initial period of time. This is called the initial rate period. After that um, initial rate period, the rate could go up or down based on the movements of the interest rate market. 
Most arms have an initial rate period of five to seven years, and the initial rate is typically lower than what you would get on a conventional mortgage, which makes the loan attractive to um, buyers. After the initial rate period, the rate could go up, causing the monthly mortgage payments to rise, or it could go down. Typically, after the initial rate period, the arm rate is adjusted once a year. So let's look at an example of an adjustable rate mortgage. The Gislins purchased a condominium for $275,000 with a down payment of $115,000. They obtained a 15-year adjustable rate mortgage with the following terms. The interest rate is based on the one-year treasury bill rate, which currently is 0.5%, and the add-on rate, which is 3%. The initial rate period is five years, and thereafter, the interest rate is adjusted one once a year and a new monthly mortgage payment is calculated. A. Determine the initial arm rate. Okay, so the arm rate is the sum of the one-year treasury bill rate and the add-on rate. So the treasury bill rate was 0.5%. Um, And then the bank has an add-on rate of 3%. So if you add those together, you'll have the initial arm rate. So the initial arm rate is 3.5%. So that's actually really low. Interest rates are going right now right at around 4.5% if you have very good credit. So that's why people would be attracted to this loan because it's quite a bit lower than what you would get on a conventional loan. B, determine the initial monthly payment for principal and interest. Okay, so you can do this a couple of ways. Um, you can do this using the formula we did previously, or you can also do this using the table on um, table 10.4. So um, let's look at how to do it with the table, just in case you don't want to use the formula. Okay, so we're going to take the price of the home, which was 270000 we're going to deduct the down payment that they paid, which they paid 115000 This is going to tell you how much their mortgage is going to be. Their mortgage is going to be 160000 And remember, they are um, paying 3.5%. So what you need to do um, in order to use that table, you have to take the 160000 and you have to divide it by 1000 and that's going to get you 160. You need that to use the table, plus your rate, which is 3.5%, plus you need the number of years they're going to make the payment, which is 15 years. Okay, then you can go reference the table and get the value from the table. Okay, so let me find table um, 10.4. You could also just use the formula, just so you know. It's up to you what you think is easier. Um, they're both about the same. Okay, so I am looking at my formula or my table, table 10.4. I'm going to first find the rate, which is over here on the left-hand side, which is 3.5. Your years are across the top. I have a 15-year mortgage. So a 15-year mortgage at 3.5% is going to give me the value 7.14883. Okay, that's what I need. 7.14883. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 160 and I'm going to multiply it by that number. Oops. And when I multiply that, that's going to tell me what my monthly payment should be approximately. So my monthly payment should be approximately $1,143.81. Or you could use that really, really long formula. It's up to you how you want to approach it. Okay, last question. If after the five-year initial rate period, the rate of the one-year treasury bill rises to 1.5%, determine their new arm rate. So the new arm rate would be the 1.5% plus the 3% add-on. So they would now be up to a 4.5% rate. Rate caps. 
So to prevent a rapid increase in the interest rate, some banks have what's called a rate cap. A rate cap limits the maximum amount the interest rate can change. A periodic rate cap limits the amount the interest rate may increase in any one period. So if your period is annually, then it will tell you how much they can raise the interest rate for that one year. So a rate cap limits the maximum amount that the interest rate can change. The periodic is the maximum amount it can change per period. You also have what's called an aggregate rate cap. This limits the interest rate increase over the entire life of the loan. So let's say that the rate aggregate rate cap was 3% and that you had a 30-year loan. Over the 30 years, they would only be able to raise your interest rate 3%. So we only talk today about conventional mortgages and arms. There are several other mortgages out there. There's FHA mortgages, which are typically used by first-time homebuyers. There's VA mortgage mortgages, which are used for veterans. There's graduated payment mortgages. There's balloon payments. There's home equity loans. There's all kinds of different loans. So if you want to check out the following website, makinghomeaffordable.gov, you can see all the different types of mortgages out there.